most of you probably don't know me, I'm Emily's first cousin on her father's side, and I should have written out my talk, but Close I, didn't, I didn't expect to be can't crying hear right away. Can't, can't hear you. Shh. Close the mic. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Anyway, I didn't even know Emily existed until I was almost six, 15 years old. Our fathers were brothers, and they had spent some time together in Russia. And Emily wrote a little bit about my father. Um, she said, I also remember my uncle Osher, my cousin Moose's father, who lived with us for a year and a half before he left for Vladivostok. He was dark and handsome and kind. When he went on trips, he brought me us presents. Once, he brought many colored jelly beans and a light brown teddy bear. <laughs> Uncle Osher would read me stories. For some reason, I remember one story very vividly. The book had pictures in green-blue colors like the color of water. It was called Adnazniewski, and it was about little insects that live near streams. They were hatched in the morning and lived their whole life cycle in one day. After they laid their eggs in the evening, they died. I have no idea, I have no idea why that particular story remains so vivid in my memory. It may have been because of the green blue color of the book or because I felt so sorry for the little creatures. And of course, Emily did feel so sorry for so people's misfortunes and pain. Uh, so I'm going to split, uh, skip now to when I met Emily. My, when she moved to Dushanbe, my father moved to Vladivostok after their visit. And when the Soviet policies toward business changed, my father had to leave Russia and move to Harbin, China, where I was born. And there I lived. 15 years until the World War II was over. And then we received a letter from Sima, and we all cried. We heard about her brother's death. We heard about her life in the United States. And we decided I should go to the United States. And Emily and Sima made it possible. <laughs> Emily and Seema made it, Emily made it possible for me to go to Simmons College. I was not a great scholar. She was much, much, a much, much better student than I ever was. But somehow or other, she convinced Simmons College and my SAT math grades that I could, I could handle Simmons. So they, they extended an acceptance, and then of course my life totally changed. Emily sort of created my life. <laughs> she, once I arrived here, although she was not living in Boston she, at the time, I saw a lot of her. When I had problems, Emily came. When I, whether it was because I wasn't getting along with my roommates, her, her solutions were always practical. <laughs> the, the problem with my roommates ended up with our beds being moved, and I was happy. <laughs> uh, eventually, and then uh, after I married, I'm getting lost here. Anyway, we, we moved west, and I didn't see Emily very much. And then my husband got a job at Brooklyn College, so we moved to Brooklyn. And that year, in 1962, when Emily was having so, well, Emily and Matt were having so many problems, she would come every week to my crummy Brooklyn apartment, mm -hmm. and we would sit and talk while my son was in nursery school. After that, uh, we moved to Rockaway, and um, we would visit very often. Eventually, my daughter, I would take my daughter horseback riding out on the island, and while she curried horses, I would visit Emily, and again, we would sit and talk. So my whole life was a constant connection to Emily. She taught me my politics. 
<laughs> we went to the Henry Wallace inauguration together. She taught me uh, about the great uh, early American writers, the muckrakers. Uh, she taught me so many practical political things, and it really kind of focused uh, my understanding and my love, my love for America. I spoke to her, oh, we con continued our connection through letters, wherever we were, wherever I was, because she was always in New York. I was all over the map. Uh, so we continued our connection through letters. We would write every, pretty much every other week. In fact, the day before she died, I got a letter from her. Oh. It's still on my desk. I spoke to her that day, and I assured her the operation was safe, that I had a neighbor who just had it, who was 72, who was 92, and who was just driving a car. And um, everybody, I guess, was convincing her it was safe. It was safe. So her death is, I knew she would have to die, but not. Thank you.